Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about a way of simulating uh, something called a loop gain of a feedback circuit, which um, is, uh, has actually been relatively recently published, um, and I'll send um, a link to the paper around um, with an email address that kind of describes the underlying um, ideas. It's actually very closely related to um, node fixing and uh, source splitting, which uh, should be familiar to you from uh, our discussion of them in circuits. And so what I've got here is going to require some explanation. Um, so we're going to walk through it. What I've done here is I've taken my uh, Unity Gain Follower AC simulation test harness that we uh, described in the last video, and I've basically changed it in a few ways. Okay, so first of all, I've made um, a second copy of the circuit up here. And this is going to, um, if you like, stand in to determine what is the quiescent operating point of our circuit. So we've got a copy of the input voltage that's fed up to uh, this copy of the circuit, and it's producing an output which is called V out Q. And then this is our test circuit and what we're doing here is we're basically holding the inverting input of our circuit under test at V out Q. So this this uh, voltage source with a triangle or the rather a, a diamond is a dependent source and in our circuit symbol this is actually a behavioral voltage source and, and what that does is it basically allows me to specify some arbitrary function here um, to determine what the voltage is. And so what I've done is I basically just made the voltage that this voltage source supplies equal to the voltage on node V out Q. And so this voltage source basically just says whatever that voltage is doing I'm going to make this voltage here at this node equal to that. And then I've got two sources here which are actually going to be my AC sources. Um, V1 and V2, and you can think of this as um, kind of an AC source that I've split into two pieces. One that's kind of going uh, in the forward direction around the loop, and the other one that's going in the sort of reverse direction around the loop. And the way that I've set these up is um, as follows. So I've got a DC value of zero, and I've got my AC amplitude set in terms of a parameter called B. So the amplitude of this source of V1 is going to be 1 minus B. And the amplitude of this source is going to be just B. And what I'm going to do, B as a parameter, is I'm going to do a dot step where I do two successive simulations where, where B is equal to 0 and then B is equal to 1. Well, when B is equal to 0, the amplitude, the AC amplitude of this source is 1, and this one is 0. When B is equal to 1, the amplitude of this source is 0, and the amplitude of this source is 1. And so this has kind of got the flavor of um, source splitting. So we fix this node, and we have split this AC source into two pieces, one that's connected here and one that's connected here, and we are basically applying a signal first here, calculating the response with this side fixed, and then we're applying a signal here, calculating the response with this fixed. And we're going to combine those simulation results to plot the loop gain of the system. Now conceptually the loop gain is what I get when I break the loop someplace, and I apply a test signal here and then I chase the loop around and I see what the response of the circuit is here at the same place. Um, conceptually, that seems like a straightforward thing to do, but in practice it's uh, actually quite a tricky thing to do properly because if you actually break the loop, you actually disturb the DC operating point and you change the loading of the circuit. And so what you'd like to do is create some way of basically simulating the loop gain without actually having to break the loop. And so this turns out to be a fairly nice way of doing so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the simulation. And I'm going to tile vertically again. 
But instead of clicking on the output here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine results from these two different simulations. And uh, this is a really kind of a cool thing that you can do in LT Spice with a, a dot step simulation. So what I'm going to do here on my plot window is to right click and add a trace. And the trace that I'm going to add is actually an expression that's going to combine the results from the two different simulations. So the loop gain, it turns out on this paper that uh, you'll get the link to in an email, is going to be given by um, the sum of the current that's excited in this voltage source when I'm driving here plus the current that's excited in this voltage source when I'm driving here. So this would be I21 plus I12 on our notation from source splitting last year. So the way that we do that, um, actually it's going to be that, sort of the cross currents divided by the sum of the two self currents. So the, the thing that appears in the denominator is basically I11 and I22. And so the way that we do that in LT Spice is we say I want the current flowing through voltage source 2 during the first simulation, which I specify here by putting at 1, plus the current flowing through voltage source V1 during the second simulation. So I put I of V2 at 1 plus I of V1 at 2. I want that divided by I of V1 at 1 plus I of V2 at 2. And this is the loop gain of my amplifier. So at low frequencies, the loop gain is about, oh, a little bit more than 50 dBs, which is what you might expect for a single stage amplifier like this with uh, transistors that have a length of about 6. Um, the gain of 40 dBs would be um, 100, uh, so we're a little bit more than 50 dBs, which is going to be a couple hundred, which is what we saw uh, last year in circuits um, pretty consistently for this kind of bias current level. And then we start to roll off at, in this case, about a few hundred hertz and we follow a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. At some frequency we cross 0 dB. This is called the unity gain crossover frequency. You can see that in this case it's about, oh I don't know, without the grid on it's a little hard to tell, but probably like 200 kilohertz. And then there's another pole out here and we're rolling off at 40 dB per decade. And then all of a sudden we are flat, which means that we've hit basically two zeros. And you can see that the phase is starting out here at zero, and we hit the first pole, and we go down to minus 90, and we hit the second pole, and we're headed for minus 180. And then when we hit these two zeros, we get another 180 degrees of phase shift. Um, and so you can figure out that those are going to be probably right half plane zeros um, on the basis of the way the phase goes. Um, but anyway, so. A couple things to note about this. There's a parameter which is important for stability, which is called phase margin. That's basically what is the difference between the phase of the loop gain at the unity gain crossover frequency and minus 180. Well, here's the unity gain crossover frequency, which is right here-ish. So the phase at that point looks like it's about minus, oh, I don't know, minus 110. So when I look down here to minus 180, that means I have about 70 degrees of phase margin. Um, we'll talk more about phase margin and loop gain and gain margin and what all that stuff means uh, a little bit later in the class. But this is, this is a really good way of simulating uh, loop gain. And so this is what I would suggest you do uh, for that simulation in, uh, in your machine problem three. Okay.